Hi, everyone. <clears throat> welcome, welcome. So my name is Liesl. I'm going to be teaching this awesome painting back here today. And you can change up the colors if you want to substitute some colors for the colors that you like. <clears throat> and I'm just seeing where everyone's tuning in from. So you can type where you're where you're watching from. You can always watch this later. You can pause this, rewind. And if you've painted with me before, you can always type in that in chat as well. Hi guys. We'll just wait like a couple more minutes and then we'll start. So I'm just gonna go over some of the supplies I'm gonna be using. Welcome. Okay, so if you've painted with me before, you probably already have an idea of what we're gonna be using and it's all primary colors, black and white as well. And uh, for brushes, you can use any one of these kind of brushes. This is a three quarter inch round and this is just a flat brush that you could use for the background. So we're gonna take our time to make that background and as for the other brushes, um, usually something more detailed. We don't. We really only need like two different brushes. Um, these ones are more detailed round brushes. Anything with a nice point. Yeah, welcome back. <clears throat> yep, did a brush tutorial, and I'm doing another brush tutorial. So you can always check that out. It's as a upcoming event on our Facebook too. Hi hey guys, welcome. So again, for my paints, if you're using the same colors that I'm using, I like to use phthalo blue, uh, bright yellow, or cadmium yellow, um, bright red, and black and white. Hi, welcome from Ireland. I am in Durham region, Ontario. So I am Canadian. So if you have your water cup and paper towel, we can get started. So again, you can pause this video if you need to. Great. All right, so uh, for this painting here, I'm just gonna hold up a little bit more closer too. Now, like I said before, if you wanna change up colors and uh, rearrange things, you wanna substitute things, right, that's totally fine. Uh, I'm just going to show you how I did this one, and we're going to start with, what I like to start with is actually more of like a pink kind of stripe and some blue, and then we're going to put some purple in between and finish up with the bottom. This is a lot easier to work with. Okay, so let, let's just put this back here, and for your large brushes, again, any one of these, and it doesn't have to be just these, it can be... Um, even like a different type of round, whatever works for you. I like to use this one. I did create it with this one, but I can show you with the round, it can still do the same thing for helping it to blend. All right, so take a little dip in your water and a little dab on your napkin. So like I said, let's start with that pink stripe going through. Now, if you're not doing pink, you don't have to, you can do something else. But I'm just pulling some red to the side here and just a little dip of white. You'll notice that it actually turns very pink. The more white you put in, the lighter it's gonna get. Let's do, let's stick with the hot pink. Hi, okay, welcome back. Okay. So as you can see, it's pretty much in the middle. You know, if you want to raise it up or lower, I'm just going to start from this top corner and just do kind of like a streaky line 
you can, it doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that. You just kind of follow it down to the other side, just like this. And you can make it more of a, you can decide if I want it to be about this thick. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a little bit uneven and imperfect. That's what makes it look more interesting and kind of realistic into the sky. So I'm not trying to make it completely parallel. So just a couple streaks over here. Something like that, I think should be good. And then I'm just going to immediately wash this off because you want to do something almost right away, which is blending it out just a bit and getting some light, light pink in the middle. And that's easy to do while it's still wet. From Nova Scotia, Massachusetts. Welcome, guys. We have lots of videos to. Okay, so I washed this off and hopefully we're good for the next step. You can always just let me know when you're done too. But again, you can pause this, so it should be easy. Easy to work with, take your time. So I'm just taking some white right away on my clean brush. I washed it off. Then, you know, just kind of rub it around and start in the middle, start, this is what we're doing. We're starting to drag it out and pick up each side of your hot pink. So it's going to pick it up a little bit. You just rub it in using a bit of the side of your brush. And you'll notice that it does pick up some of that hot pink reddish tone and it makes it a bit lighter towards the middle. You just go, you can go over top of it completely. If, uh, if it goes really light, you can always add more hot pink later. See, so just dragging it to the sides. Start from the middle and just drag it out to the, to the edges where you put your hot pink here. And it just gives it a bit of a blended look. See, very easy to blend this without having to do a whole lot. You just take white after while it was still wet. That's why we want to do it right away. So if we waited any longer, it would have been harder to get that done. But uh, I'm just going to leave it right now because if you want to put more white, as you can see, maybe you want to add a bit more white in here, that can easily be done when this is dry. So give me a thumbs up when that is done and we will start working on our blue section. And then after blue, we'll do some purple and come back and add more white in the very center if needed. Hi hey guys, welcome. So if you're coming in later, again, just start from the beginning. You can watch for now. I'm just gonna wash this off right now. So I'll show you a little bit closer again. See, start with that hot pink, kind of like a stripe on each side of it. And then don't try to make it too perfect. Make it actually very imperfect and it's going to look natural into your sky. Hey, JP, hey, <laughs> welcome. Okay, some people are ready, great. Lots of thumbs up, awesome. Okay, so hopefully we washed off the brush. And we can keep using that brush, by the way. I find this is a very beginner friendly for doing galaxies and you'll notice that you can actually apply the same technique for making any other galaxies if you want to, you know, keep it easy to blend and simple. That's okay. If you, if you have your line is thicker than you intended it, you can just blend over top, put paint over top. It works.
All right, so for our next step, and again, just rewind to the beginning if you want to see the first step again. I'm taking plain blue. This is my phthalo blue. So this is my phthalo blue. And what we're going to do is just start from the corner here. See? I like to just do circular motions like this. So hold it up a little bit closer. See, you just do some circular motions like that. And it looks like it has a bit more movement and texture in the sky it gives it that more galaxy look instead of just straight strokes going you know, up and down or side to side. I also like to put in, if you see this little spot up here, it's like a very, it could be like a big, um, big star, star that's really close, could be some sort of planet. You can leave a small little circle, but don't make it too obvious. You just wanna leave an empty spot for that star or whatever you want it to be. Some sort of Milky Way effect. So what I'm doing is I have that circled out. And if you happen to fill it all in, you're just gonna dab in some light blue or just white over top and it will still work out. But this helps you realize, okay, this is where it's gonna be. And all I'm doing is filling this in right up to the pink. We're gonna put purple and blend the two together. Okay, so I'm gonna take my blue. It might seem like a lot, by the way, but we're gonna be putting purple over top. Yep, you can paint this later for sure. We keep our videos up forever. So all I'm doing, just filling it in. Yes, you can paint the frame. You can paint the edges. So if you paint the edges, you get, um, when you hang it up, you don't see the white. You just see it's all painted all the way around. I buy my supplies through Curry's, sometimes Michael's, but mostly Curry's. I like Curry's. Just working around this. Great, Colleen, welcome back. So you don't have to go over your pink and I'll say why. Uh, because we're taking purple, like I said before, so there's no need to paint over something when we're gonna be putting purple in between to merge the two together and we're gonna to touch up on our pink and the white in the center when this is dry so we come back to this later. So it's gonna look a little bit choppy right now, like it's sectioned off. And I'm just gonna take a tiny little dunk of water. Might help to spread the paint around for this step. I like to use a lot of dry brush techniques, so you don't have to do the dry brush for this step necessarily. It's so more of a fill in. You'll notice that just rubbing my brush into the canvas, doing a little bit more circular motions or you know, on the diagonal just using the side of my brush. And you can use this with your round or a, just a flat. You can also dab like this. Maybe you guys are fans of doing the dabs. So there we go, I'm just gonna let this dry. I don't wanna keep playing around with it because we're gonna be adding some more darkness into our sky. And this is not white by the way, it's just so wet that it's reflecting. <laughs> it's just reflecting from the light. When it dries, it won't be as reflective. Yes, happy Women's Day. Yep, this is the acrylic painting class. So you can paint along, paint later. So hopefully pretty easy to follow so far, right? We just have blue and then we have a nice stripe of pink. 
And just let me know when that is done. My canvas size is 16 by 20. Um, you can use a little bit of water with your paint for that step, yep. That's okay, no worries if you're late. And I'm just wondering who is joining me for my Lord of the Rings painting coming up. Yes, I do paint videos on a regular basis. So about two times a week, maybe even three sometimes, but uh, I do Zoom events and free ones for probably like three or four times a week, actually. But free ones I do about twice a week. Yeah, lots of people from, it's great, yeah. Check us out on, on our Facebook for the events and just in case, but it's going to be here live on our page. Okay, so let's do the next step. Yeah, you can learn when you're watching. You can see how you would tackle it later. Okay, so I'm still using this brush. Um, it's good to let this dry because uh, the, actually, you know what? Let's just go ahead and put in the purple because what we can do is just make some pink again and on top of your wet blue, it will be purple. Pretty, pretty easy, you don't have to try as hard and it will blend a bit easier too. Okay, so to mix purple, What I'm going to do is if your paint is dry on your canvas, maybe you did this really fast and it's already dry and you're in a dry environment, you're going to take red and white to make a hot pink again to just a little bit of a lighter pink, but you're going to add a little touch of blue to it. Although, as you can see, you notice how our background is already blue. You do not even need to do that. If you just take a bit of a lighter pink, not too bright, but you know, something like this, just a little bit more white that I added um, to my hot pink. Okay, let's use this. Start right on the edge, in between the two colors. You can see the paint is still wet, that's why it's so shiny. It's gonna pick up that blue and notice how it makes purple for free. Just follow this down. You're gonna keep picking up more and more blue. So you just have to probably wash off your brush if it starts to end up being blue. But I didn't add any blue to this, to this hot pink. No blue, it's gonna be turning purple. It's already purple. I'm just dabbing. I'm just kind of dabbing just along the edge here, which don't worry, we're gonna come back to our pink. Don't worry about that. Just focus on making your purple. And that is just the pink we used against the uh, wet blue. So I'm grabbing some more pink. And if I just dab, using, sometimes I like to use the side of my brush instead of straight on because it doesn't make it as textured and it doesn't fray your brush. And just like that. And you can actually add in more of this purple, so this pink, up higher. So you can break up all of this blue. Dab, dab, dab. Stab, and as you're trying to decide, okay, where do I want to stop? I mean, I get a little bit more sparse, so I just kind of like lightly tap 
just a way to make it look like it's kind of getting away and it's not as, there's not too much like down here where there's a whole bunch of purple. Yeah, the tree reaching to the moon. So this is a good start to our purple. I'm just gonna wash off this brush because I am collecting a lot of blue. Take my pink again. And put some more up here because I want to put some purple. Looks like it's wrapping around that star shape a bit. I want to put some of that in towards the middle. Then the Lord of the Rings is actually the Hobbit house. So we're gonna come back and do a little bit of a second coat later when this is dry. Let's turn that. So starting to lightly dab just around this center piece right here. And I'll come back and we'll finalize with our purple when this is dry. And if you're, if you think you're making brown, it might be either your red, the colors that you're mixing together. So I have the start of my purple. It's, uh, it's still picking up the blue, but you can see where it's kind of mapped out. You can see that's kind of wrapping around. Okay, so if your blue is dry, just make, um, so with your purple, you're just gonna take with your hot pink or your light pink, just add a little touch, just a little dot of blue to it. So I'm gonna come back to this, but you can see kind of where I've already started it. It has a little hint of purple to, to start just along the stripe, bringing it up a little bit and a little bit up here from there, just all along and wrapping around that star, that big star where it's gonna be shining bright. This thalo blue. So we're going to leave this alone for now. And let me know when you have that done. So it's slightly made of purple right now. And then when this is dry, we're just gonna put some more purple on top and really bring it out to make it more purple looking. Sometimes it takes two coats. Even if it was dry and we made purple for the first time, it would still have some of that blue showing through and it'd make it very blue looking. So it still very much looks like a blue indigo color, almost, almost purple. Okay, so I'm just washing this off and then after you dry this off, we're going to get down to the bottom. This is going to be really easy to do as well. You don't have to do a couple of layers like this one up here. Blue is really dark, so it's um, blending on top of blue sometimes takes just another coat. But we're going to be doing a bit of teal and we're going to get it very light up to our pink. Okay, 
Yeah, so if you're wondering what blue, the blue that I'm using is phthalo blue or primary, not using ultramarine or anything that has yellow in it to make it look greenish in color. Then you'll get brown for purple. Okay, so who is ready for our next step? If it looks like blobs of ink. Just wait for it to dry, we'll come back to it. Yeah, we're doing our teal. So if you have a premixed teal you wanna use, you can grab it. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to use it and just kind of blend it up lighter towards your pink. And then we're gonna start touching up on this purple to make it more purple. Because you can see, it still looks very bluish in color. Some little hints of purple, but it's mostly blue. Just needs that second coat. Great, coffee and I'm painting and I'm having a tea after this. All right, so I've washed this off and I'm just gonna use this brush. Actually, you know what? I will show you with a different brush just in case maybe you don't have the brush I had. I'm gonna show you, you can still do the same thing with this one as well. This is just my flat. Keep using the one that you're happy with. Just keep using that, don't worry. I'm just gonna switch to a different brush. It's still another large. We're doing the same thing. Okay, now to make teal. You wanna pull, again, blue to the side. I'm gonna start with some blue. Then I'm gonna take just, notice how I'm like taking this tiny little thing of yellow. You'll notice that it actually, if you take too much yellow, it will noticeably be green. It would, you just, you don't really want that. So you do want about three to four parts blue to one part yellow. And then how you can see if it's teal, which you can see when I took the white, take it and mix some white in here. Then you have a light teal. So test it out. Yeah, it's pretty good. Now, if you want to adjust it, you can adjust it by either adding more blue or yellow. See if I add a touch more yellow, it starts getting a bit more on the greener side. So that is all about preference. I just wanna, let's start from the bottom. Now, if it's too bright, just add more blue and yellow, it'll get darker. Yeah, turquoise is perfect. I'm just gonna start a little bit on the bottom here. Um, yeah, just kind of use the side of my brush. You can see it's kind of flat on one side. As I fill this in, you just kind of use the side. And then all I'm doing is just rubbing it in like this, or you can do those circular motions again, or you can dab, but that takes forever. That's like tedious work. So I just do this and I'm gonna fill it probably to this point, about three fourths of the way up to my pink. And then we're gonna blend it out with white, which is similar to how we did the pink technique. So you wash it off, take white, and then you drag the rest up and it makes it super light teal on the top. You can take a touch of water with your paint. Should help carry it pretty well. water, more paint. You have to make more, that's okay. This is just about there, I think it's good. And now you can't really see a whole ton of brush strokes. It's more in random directions and it looks more just matte and kind of not, you can't see all those little lines from your brush usually, hopefully. If you do more dabs, you can see more a bit more texture. Now 
That's a good idea. They stop that way. So how are we doing so far? Happy birthday. Okay, so there is my tail on the side. And by the way, we want to wash this off. So wash it off. Just like the paint, we're gonna take a little scoop of white here. So you start just above, okay? Just start just above. Go up to your pink. I'm just kind of doing the same exact technique, just kind of rubbing it in and start dragging it into your wet heel. Notice how it gets lighter, it picks it up. Now the way that you use your brush for this might make a little bit of a difference. See, as you start dabbing it and going into your teal, you usually get that little kind of smoky look. Or if you do the circular motions, Take some more light, keep going. See, now you can't see that line that you had anymore. Thanks, Becky. So hopefully that makes it easy to blend. See, while it's so wet, it's like super easy to blend. You don't have to do a whole bunch of steps that's why we want to do this right away and just do some circular motions. And it just looks like it has that gradient. It goes from, you know, teal to almost white. And just slight little dabs as you get towards the corner. So it doesn't have to just stop suddenly. You can keep that smoky look going. It looks kind of like there's a bit of cloudiness, just more of that galaxy look going through the sky. And did that work for you guys? Seemed pretty good and easy. If you make green, just go back with some blue over top. But I think it's, even if you make green, it's fine. It kind of gives that Aurora Borealis look, maybe just a little bit. And um, you already have a lot of blue here, so I think it's okay. Okay, so if I bring it up a bit closer, you can see all of those little wispy strokes that I made, but nothing is going just up and down or side to side. Now I'm going to wash this off. Wash that off. So if you're looking to make it more, um, just a bit more blue in general, maybe you went more green. We can just take a bit of blue and white, just a little bit. So if I, in my white section, if I add just a little dip of blue to it to make it a bit more of a light blue, you can break up all of your teal, maybe start from the corner. You see, I'm just starting from the corner. This gives it a lot of movement and different color tones. See, it just breaks it up. Add a bit more of a blue corner. And it still has that underlying tone of your green or teal color. Little dabs, little circular motions. So 
so you can have fun with it. So, oh. so up at the top, if you want a bit more white in between your pink and teal, you can you know, just add some more white to your teal. Or just take plain white again. You know, go right up to your pink just a little bit. Give it a bit of a, you don't want too much empty canvas. So if you just want it white there, which is kind of what I did in the original as well. It gives it a nice little barrier so you don't have to worry about blending pink in with white. So hopefully this is dry, or at least mostly dry. How is it for you guys? So again, we're going to go back right around this area. We're going to put our purple in, finish up with uh, that final layer of pink, you know, just in case you lost it, and uh, any final white that you want to put through, and finish up with this before we start our trees. Of course, with stars first. So I think we might be ready for our next step. Okay. All right, so wash that off. Dab it on your napkin. I have a good technique for making trees. You just need a good, you just need a detailed brush you're comfortable with and uh, it's mostly just water, but we'll get there. Yep, we're working in the purple now. All right, now let's actually make our purple. So pull your red in over top of that hot pink touch of blue. Remember, we already have a lot of blue in our background. Just a little touch. It's going to be more of a pink purple to start. Um, if you really insist on adding a bit more blue, you can add little dots of it. Just don't go too blue because you'll just, it's just going to not change. It's not going to look purple on top of your blue sky. Okay, so I'm going to use this. See, it has like a pinkish tone. It's like a pinky purple color. Okay, test it out. Start right up to the edge. It's gonna help make that nice transition from your pink into your blue. Use up a lot of your paint right next to your hot pink. Because like I said, you're gonna have an easy transition from pink to purple to blue just by doing that. And then as you get less paint, or if you have to wash it off, Right. You'll notice that it doesn't come off as strong. This is a little bit of a dry brush, but as you just dab and do your little circles, it enhances right over top of where you already put 
sun first layered the purple, which was the pink, it makes it more purple looking. So you can still see some of that blue behind it, but it has that nice bit of purple now. Now, if you want it a bit lighter, all you have to do is just add a touch more white to it. All right, so if you get see a little bit more white, see it's more obvious. So if you need to add a bit of white and you want it to be more vibrant, that will help. Then I'm going to keep going. Just have some purple, just some circular strokes. So it looks like you don't, it has more movement and more swirls, softness, smoky look going through the sky. Yes, I am left-handed. You see, you can notice that it's definitely more purple. So I'm going to do some up here. Forgot to do that. And don't forget, go around your moves. So I'm going to take some more purple. Yeah, subscribe. We'll do more videos. The more subscribers we get, and check us out for all of our videos. We've done lots of things, and our website we have like hundreds of videos. Look at that smokiness. Go around this circle right here. And you can put as much purple as you want if you want to put a little bit less blue, but I think this seems like a good amount. You can subscribe to Artist Palette Durham, which is video watching. Yeah, thanks Wendy. So when this dries, usually the blue, it usually dries um, with the blue still seeping through just a bit. However, it is a little bit of back and forth, too. We're getting close to finishing up with the pink. I'm just washing this off. Taking just by plain blue again. And this will help tone down any purple that is a little bit too much. So you need to lightly tap with the very corner of your brush. You can do sometimes a second coat of blue as well. It makes it a little bit deeper in color. Little taps, you can break up some of the purple. So it helps break up some of the purple and just in case you did too much purple.
And I'm saving this top corner for when I do my dark blue in the sky. Just going back to the triple here. Really want to put a little bit around my where that star is going to be. And it's hard to stop painting, by the way, especially when you're trying to put a bit more of a blend and you're deciding on which colors you like. So these are just guidelines. So if you want to add other colors in here, that is an option. You might want to refresh if you lost the video, just in case something happened. So just using the side of my brush and just doing little dabs or circular motions. And you can see all of those little dabs too up close which is fine, it adds to the movement in your sky. Uh, most favorite brand of paint? Uh, that's hard to decide, <laughs> but I'm so used to using Start Acrylic, which is what I use all the time. It's so far really good student grade. And give me thumbs up or say good to go. If you want to, if we're good for our next step, which is right in this pink right here, it's gonna bring it back out just a little bit more and also put in some white in the center to you know, make it look like it's got a Milky Way effect too in the sky. Um, yeah, just finalize that. And then we'll finalize, finish this up before we splatter with stars. Oh, and the darkness on the corner. Awesome, so people are ready. And yeah, we just did the lone purple tree. Really good results. Not even just saying that, they're really good. Fun one, good beginner friendly as well. Well, thanks, Jackie. Thanks for joining. All right, so washing this off. So we're going back into the pink. Taking red again, touch of white to get that hot pink, remember that. There's no harm in going back and forth to go over certain things. It's not like once you're done a color, that's it forever. It's all about going back and blending in a little bit more. So if I take this hot pink, you can use a touch of water. See right on the edge here. If you're just using, you can use more of the thin side. See this little right here, just kind of press like that. It'll help blend into your purple, which is still probably a bit more wet, right? And you can slightly tap it into some of the purple and just bring up that pink that was originally there. You don't have to make it the same thickness, by the way. See, you can just maybe bring it in more pink right here, just kind of have a little bit of a difference of some pink that's like right here maybe, and then just bring it down to the corner so it's not all perfectly the same. Still doing those dabs. Just on right on the edges. 
pot. Mm -hmm. And same over on this side, because we have that stripe. There's like a bit of a stripe going down. So you can go right over to the edge, bring it in a little bit, maybe thin it out using you know the thin side still, just thin it out, it's like it's disappearing a bit. And I'm trying to do this right away. Remember, we had to do this before. We had to wash this off into white. And dry this off. Dry it off pretty well. Take some white. You start from the middle. So I want more of my white to be kind of like right here. And it makes it even more vibrant, as you can see. It's like super bright. And then you start dragging it out to the side. But use up a lot of your paint right towards the middle and in any little spots in between some of your pink layers. So maybe you have, see this pink stripe I had going here? Maybe I'll just put in some white on, on each side of that to really enhance it a bit more and shape around it. A little bit more white. And maybe over here, I don't want my dark pink as prominent. I don't want it to be too uniform. I'm trying to change it up. And then that's when you can go a little bit more to the edges, soften it up. If it's dry, then just go to a light pink, like a super light pink. Yes, Deborah. Yeah. Okay. These soft little dabs. You know, with the white, just picks up some of that hot pink. It automatically makes it a lighter pink. But you started the white in the center to so really get it really white in some spots before you start making and blending it out to the edges. It's actually kind of a cool effect. Great, Ariella. Yay, thank you. So whenever you feel like you're done playing around with this, if you're thinking you need to blend it more between your teal and your pink, you just have to take a little bit of white, I think is usually the trick, so you have a bit of a white gap, because teal and pink do not mix super well. And that's why it's mostly white, as you can see in the background, so you can put a little bit more white over there, but I think it's fine. Just kind of like that. And any second coats you need to do, right? Maybe you need to do a little bit going into your purple. Sometimes second coats really help make things more opaque. You don't see the background as much anymore. All right, so I'm gonna stop playing with that. I think this is fine how it is. I like it. And then we're gonna do some dark blue in the corner and fill in this little spot right here. Now we can finally, we can switch to a smaller brush if you need to, especially if you're using a smaller canvas, that might be a good idea. I'm not gonna to switch to my smaller brushes until I'm done with my sky. Okay, so let me know when you guys are ready. I'm just seeing if there's any questions. Oh, that's cute, Deborah. Nope, you can 
I like the chatter, it's great. Oh, <laughs> what do we do with all the canvases we paint? So we actually have hundreds of paintings, obviously, because we paint so much a week and we have duplicates, even three to four um, of the same painting. We do little art sales. So that's, that's something we do. Either little art sales or we just give them away free. A little bit of both. Yes, this is Vera's studio. I'm visiting and I'm painting here right now. Usually I'm in my studio, so next time I'll be in my studio. All right, so let's do the black. It's not actually just black. It's kind of like a dark blue coming in from the side. And then this little light section, it's kind of like a super light blue. Give it some, a little bit of shine. This is acrylic paint. All right. So with my sand, I'm just, you know, large brush, um, you can use your flat or you can use your round. And what we're doing is we're making, if I pull some blue to the side, touch, little touch, okay, of black. Maybe two, just maybe. Okay, test it out on the side. You'll notice that it's really dark. Just with those little touch or two of the black. Lightly dab. Use up even on the frame if you have to. If you have a lot of paint, wipe some of it off. This is more of a dry brush technique you want to be careful with because it's going to be very noticeable. And if it's too much black and too much paint, it's just a blob of black now in your sky. That's why you want it lightly coated. It's not dripping with paint or anything. And use up a lot of your paint on the edges and then you'll feel that there's not a lot coming off. So now you can bring in this darkness and you know, with confidence that it's not going to just make a black blob unless you're trying to make, you know, a black hole. So I'm just gonna dab, mostly just dab or do the circular motions, just exactly what I was doing before. We just do $10, we're not trying to, it's like the cheapest thing ever. And it's only because we have hundreds of them and we need to get rid of them. Just adds a nice little bit of darkness. You can always put in more. So if you wanna put in some more black, Just start from the corner and drag it towards the edge there. Yes, you can change your water now. So if you need to change your water, do any touch-ups while you're waiting? Hi, welcome. That's a great idea to work. Hmm. If you're new, you can check it out from the beginning, check out different videos. We have different paintings. So give me a thumbs up when you guys are ready for this and then we'll make our stars. Yeah, we're making kind of like a galaxy sky. Well, you'll see how we draw the trees.
trees are really fun. I love making trees. Okay, um, now if you're using a smaller brush, that's great. Use it. I, I would recommend something like just a smaller version. This is like a bright size four. You can do the same little dabbing with the corner of the brush, or you can still use your large brush more on the, just a bit on the corner or side of it. And all it is is just a light blue. So white, pea-sized white little dot of blue. You get more of a light blue. Something like that. Lightly tap. Just a couple little taps there, and then wash it off. Wash it off, I'm switching to the smaller brush. Just take a little bit of white after you washed it off, and then it's gonna add some in, little dots with the corner of my brush. So a little bit on the outsides. It's gonna get, it's gonna appear a little bit bigger, but I just blend it in with a bit more of my purple, you know, just so, so that it looks like the purple is back in there wrapping around, unless you like it like this. It's kind of like the man in the moon. Keep it very light in here. You can even use this light blue to add anywhere else. But those are just options and ideas. So if I go back to my purple, remember that purple we made? Test it out in your purple, make sure it's a good purple, you like it. You can lightly dab. And shape around this so-called shiny star. To really the size that you want it to be. So it's pretty much the same technique we've been doing, but I use a bit of a smaller brush. More in the corner again, little dabs, and also those little circular motions. So that's, that should be the sky before we add stars. And I know that when we put our stars and start adding trees, things are gonna look more like a galaxy sky when we put the trees in. Yep, you can watch this later, no problem. We save all of our videos. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of splatter. Now you don't have to do splatter. You can just do dots for your stars and put them where you want. If you're doing a bit of splatter and dotting stars, we're going to do it together and make sure you're in a space that you are comfortable making splatter. Okay, I'm going to wash this off. Now is a good time to change your water if you haven't yet, but not necessary. I'm just gonna leave mine. And hopefully we're ready for trees soon.
All right, so they're ready. Awesome. Okay, splatter, a little bit of splatter. Uh, pick a brush. You can use something like this, something that you can pull the bristles back and just kind of let it flick. You know, it's kind of both like that. You can lay it flat down and just do some flicking from above. Yeah, that's all we're gonna close. Okay, those stars, and then there's a little bit of splatter in there. But you know, ultimately it's up to you how much you want to add in. So there's a little the splatter usually makes tiny little things that you can barely see. All right, and then when you add in, you can kind of like poke some bigger stars because from a distance you mostly see the bigger stars which is why you want to put in some more bigger stars in there so i'm going to take with my flat brush just dip it in your water and then i'm going to take some white so i have white coated nicely coated on my brush here And what you're going to do after this is you're just going to put it in water, just a little dip like that. So you're just going to let it drip just a little bit, and then you're going to flick it at your canvas. So just pull it back and then flick. And like also go towards it. And you get just random splatter throughout. It's pretty cool. I did more here than I did in that one, but it's so fun. I'm gonna leave it like that, and then we're gonna put in more stars. I'm just wiping off the paint. And using, um, I think I'll just use the back handle of one of my random brushes, so something like this, a small or a larger one is fine. Dip into your white. I'm gonna write in here, remember the star? You can add a couple in here or just a bigger one. You can put a little circle in there, a couple around it, and then just circle with the back handle to make bigger stars so you can see them a lot better. Okay, just make them bigger. They stand out a little bit more, and up close, they look a lot bigger. Makes it look more like a galaxy. Some more white dots. Maybe make some bigger ones. It might seem like they're a bit too big, but trust me, from a distance, when you look at it from back there, they look like little stars. This tooth, toothbrush can work too. And yeah, I'm just going to pick certain ones that I want to make bigger. You can make a constellation in your sky, you know, stuff like that. Now you can easily add more later after your trees. If you want to put some strategically in between trees, you can do that. A couple little dots. Bigger ones. And I'm just going to stop now. That's good enough for me right now. So how do we do with our splatter? Maybe a couple into my pink. Hopefully really fun. Thanks, Patricia. So now we have a fun looking sky. 
Now we can put in our trees. I know it can be messy when you're splattering. You get the splatter in random places. Yeah, it's a good practice for galaxies. I like to paint galaxies. So this is one of the easier, uh, more beginner friendly galaxies. You just have to, you can't really control it too much unless you go closer to your canvas. You can control your splatter by going closer to it. Um, but usually it's, um, it's going to splatter in other places. Yay, thanks Wendy. Thanks for the super chat. Yeah, the splatter is fun. Are we ready for trees? Or are we just, I need to tell you to stop splattering probably. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you have a box, um, you can just put it in the box and splatter in there. That makes sense. Um, a good portion, way better than Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is, uh, you know what? I'm not going to say anything. But a good portion. Yeah. Splattering. Hopefully that we yeah, it was really fun, but when I bring this up close, you can see it did quite a splatter, right? But you don't see it from too far away. It's actually very faint and subtle. That's why those big stars are great. Okay, so let's let's do the trees and hopefully I've stopped people from going overboard. The brush that you want to use, definitely a detailed brush. You can switch to um, more of a flat, right? So just a kind of medium size four flat one to start. But you're going to find you're going to be mostly using this. It just takes patience, especially if you're making trees with branches, <laughs> which is pretty standard. Uh, patience and filling up your canvas so that it looks kind of like a forest. So dip in my water, take a nice dip, just let it drip into some of my black paint, and I swirl it around, see how I like to twirl my brush, and keep it thin on the end. I think that's where sometimes a lot of people lose the concept of thin lines, is you have way too much on your brush and you're not keeping the ends thin. So, let's practice with a small tree. For example, maybe off to the side here, I'm just gonna flick it upwards from the bottom, flick it up. Problem with these brushes is that it loses a lot of its paint. You have to come back for more. Okay, more, just kind of do a little stick and press a little bit harder towards the bottom, just a little bit. Thanks, Becky. Okay, so simple, and it doesn't have to be straight. I know this looks like I took a ruler and made this kind of line. That was just by accident. Maybe it was like the perfect, most perfect line I'll ever make in my life. But generally like um, trees that don't stand up that straight, sometimes they have little bends and stuff. Um, however, just lightly hold further back on your handle, okay? Have like a pencil and then just let it make a little bit of a Y shape, a little squiggly, sort of squiggly. Don't overdo that. You don't want like those seaweed branches. Just a little squiggly and then just make another little line come out from there. Super thin, barely touch your canvas. 
It doesn't have to be symmetrical. Maybe on the other side, I won't even do as much as I did. I'll just mostly maybe a little bit lower down, a couple of branches. And then I'll just leave it like that. This is just black. Yeah, you can watch this later, no problem. Hopefully that worked out well. That was just a little tree. Let's make a bigger one. Maybe I'll switch to a slightly bigger detail brush. This is more of a size six. It, has, it still has the point. Still has that point. Water and black paint. It holds a lot more paint, obviously, because it's bigger. Twirl it. Let's do one that's kind of more in the center. You know that tree coming down from the, more in the center of the painting? Press a little bit harder. I want this to be a bigger tree, so it's gonna be a little bit wider this time. So I can press harder towards the bottom. And then leave it very thin towards the top. So I'm just going to lightly go over towards the top. But as you can see, it's mostly thicker towards the bottom. There. See how it's a lot thicker now? It's a bigger tree. Now, to make our branches, you can switch to that smaller brush, unless you're, you're still using it. Smaller brush. Twirl it around in your black paint. It's kind of watery. I find it helps a lot. Twirl the brush, and then just lightly press, kind of go halfway up. You just bring it out a bit to the side. Just a little bit of a Y shape. And then just fill it in with tiny little branches, barely touch. Start within the tree, make another one. They usually go a little bit upwards as well. Sometimes they don't, sometimes a little bit to the side, but just don't make it symmetrical on each side. Press and then lightly touch. Just make little extra Y's coming out. And towards the top, I just want to get a little bit more. We don't want it to be just so empty, so a little bit more coming out, a couple little Y shapes. Lightly press with the very tip of your brush. And, you know, take a step back and look at your painting. That's where you can decide if you need to add more branches. Maybe you want to keep it simple because we have more trees to make. So you, maybe you don't want to go too wild, right? But um, I think I'll just add one more kind of coming over here. It's really wherever you feel like putting it. And when I make this again, it's always different. So I'm going to keep going with my trees. Oh, welcome. Yeah, this is great practice for trees. Remember, barely touch with the very tip. 
a little you know water and some paint keeps it consistent mine's pretty watery um, I find that it's very helpful for me twirl it around keep it thin on the tip of your brush and this is a bit bigger than your detailed brush this is a size two so if you're using something smaller it's better Okay, so I'm going to keep going. I want to mark down a couple of trees. So I want to have maybe a little bit of a, they're going to start going diagonal. So I'm starting to work my way around to make it look like you're looking up at the sky and there's trees and like a forest around you with no leaves on it. Switching to my size six again. So press on the bottom. With the upwards, press a little bit harder towards the bottom. Okay, and then just taking a bit more water and some paint. I'm going to mark my other trees down. So I think over on the side, I'll have another tree just a little bit here coming out right on the side here and you can do fillers I call them fillers after you've done these major trees that yeah you have some smaller ones see how there's tinier ones at the bottom that's definitely your smallest detail brush just to make little tiny ones much shorter they're the fillers you can put like one here, one here, or two here, two, you know, just do that afterwards. I find that if you do it all at once, you maybe go, I think I put too many trees. Just start with some of the major ones. And I have right here, let's like flip it outwards, more of a branch coming out, a bit of a tree on the side. <laughs> Jill, asking for a friend. Well, your friend is going to have a tough time getting that out. It is, you have to wash it out right away. Now I'm going to do the other side. I'm just going to switch sides here. So we flip it upwards. It will end up right around there. Press a bit harder at the bottom. Yeah, that tall, I think it's good, coming from the side. Yeah, this one, pressing a little bit harder, keeping the top super thin. Maybe, you know, a little filler so you can see what the fillers would look like. Maybe like two right here. Just keep them super thin and small. Maybe a little one right here. Another one right here. And my last one, I'm just going to put it right around. See how some of them are not perfectly straight? As to the variety and uniqueness of the trees. I'm grabbing some more water with my black paint. Lightly press. You get a couple little branches coming out from certain branches. Gives it a nice, pretty branchy look. 
Do a couple coming down a little bit lower on the tree as well. These are some little tiny branches coming down. Lisa, I swear you asked for music last time. Was it you that asked for music last time? All my clothes are covered in pink too. Trust me on that one. So these tiny little ones, you know, lightly press with the very tip of your brush. They have little tiny branches. Don't go as wide out. They're supposed to look like they're further away, right? So they don't have a whole lot going on. So you can see a bit more close just how small they are. And then, you know, the main one in the middle, much wider. And how are trees going? They're working out. Although I have to admit, painting with music on is great which I'm sure a lot of you guys are doing. Turning out, painting, getting in the groove. Oh, as I do these trays, all I'm trying to do is make sure that each one is a bit more unique and not too much the same like the others. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, thanks. See, it takes a little bit of patience and time to just slowly work on this and get the branches to your liking. You can do overlap. See how some of the branches might overlap others? That's okay, Molly. I'm sure they look great. So don't forget, we always like to see results post on our Facebook, and everybody loves seeing other results and interpretations. Just comment in our event page or under our calendar whenever you're done. Maybe you're taking your time doing this, and you can always post it another time. Plus, taking a picture of it can help you realize how it looks from distance as if it's hanging on the wall. I'm just working my way, adding lots of branches to some main branches coming out from the tree. Some coming a little bit lower. Just a couple, not too far down, but if you do, just maybe one or two. Lightly press. You notice that some of them you can make a little bit longer. A bit longer. Make a couple little wide shapes. And usually, I'm not trying to make perfectly straight sticks. We got little soft bends to them. I'm doing this very random. I'm not trying to copy the original too much. Don't force anything. Just a little bit up closer again. That's very nice, Kayla. I'm glad you like painting along. 
Okay. Okay, I'm doing some overlap here. You don't need to be too crowded, so you don't have to do a whole lot if a lot of it is overlapping each other. Who has done their trades? I want to know who's already done. I want to know who, maybe you have a smaller canvas, or maybe you just, you're getting impatient with it, you just need to come back later. It's a lot of just taking your time to really focus on putting these little branches all over the, all over the place so that it looks like you have a lot of branches, tiny ones. Man, I'm almost done, almost there. So you can see, uh, maybe right here, you can always, if you can afford to, just add in little filler trees, the fillers. It's getting there. It's easy to zone out. I'm sure that's why a lot of us are quiet now because we're focused on making our trees. Or at least most of the tops of them. Right, so I'm going to finish up on the other side, now that this side is done. A little more close up, really press. Lots of branches, mostly towards the top and a little bit into the middle. <laughs> I 
actually chair. It's really hard not to say that. It's just how many times can you say that? Here's a happy little tree. Here's a bunch of happy trees. Okay. Oh, a couple more branches up here. So speaking of happy little trees, who are done? Who's done their happy little trees? We can add one last thing, which is a highlight. So I want to show you guys that before you sign it. I mean, if you want to, don't force anything. But a little bit of a highlight on the trees can add a little bit more dimension to it. <laughs> Maybe you're about to start that. Maybe you're just like, whoa, she's making all these trees come alive. Really fun. Especially when you get into the zone and you're, you got that little rhythm of making the branches to your life. Great, yes, join me for other classes. Check out our events on Facebook under the events tab. Post your results there. Join us on if you want to join Zoom or previous recordings, we have a lot on artistpalatedurham.com. Uh, now, for the highlights, I just want to show you. I, I'm sure we're all taking our time doing the trees or maybe doing it later or maybe you're already done. For a bit of a highlight, what we do is we take a light gray, white and a touch of black to get this light gray. Remember, twirl it, some water on your brush. Twirl it, keep it nice and thin on the very tip of it. Thank you, Becky. Thanks for joining. And what we do is, well, not what we do, but whatever you want to do. If you want to try things out in different trees, just follow maybe one side of it or uh, a certain part of the tree. Just do these little lines and you can even just do little sideways like that. Kind of similar to a birch style, but it really just adds to the texture. Textured look on your tree. See those little commas I put horizontally? And I think this is a great addition. Lightly press it into your black. If you decide, on one of your trees, just by seeing how it looks, you decide you don't like it, just put black over top again. But I think that you can't really go wrong with this. It's a bit of a light gray. Glitter, you can use glitter for sure. I would use glitter in your sky. You just pick and choose some of your trees, not necessarily have to do all of them, especially the tiny little ones, you don't have to. But this is a great illusion to make your trees look thinner than they really are if you add this on top. Right over here, couple lines. And I'm not going on every single branch. That is just not necessary. But on the main part of the branch, the ones that are sticking out coming from the edges, usually those ones are what I'm highlighting. Great. Great to hear, Rachel. Yeah, so hopefully this was fun. This was a good beginner painting for galaxies, making trees. Maybe you are more comfortable and confident in making trees. It was all, it's just practice, practice. Couple horizontal lines, squiggly lines, add some more texture to the trees. And this a 
couple of horizontal lines. And we'll put a big, you know, put a little bit of a wavy line, make it look more, again, textured. Follow it up a little bit, maybe a couple of your branches, why not? Then move on to the next tree. Awesome. Yeah. Hope to have you guys come back again. You can see what's coming up. We're doing outer space. See, I love making galaxies. I make a lot of them. Um, mostly on our website, but I have a galaxy one coming up for outer space. I have a planet. I hope you don't see how a lot of those being made. But if you're into that, let's make like a Saturn look. It's not exactly that planet, but it could be. All right. I think that's good. I think that's done. That little additional um, highlights on the trees, really like it. Okay. So maybe I'll see you guys again. Post your results on our Facebook page, tag us on social media. Maybe I'll see you on your Zoom or YouTube. Subscribe so we can keep doing more free ones. The more subscribers we have, the better it is for us to make more free events. Yeah, we do it. Okay. I did enjoy this one, Michelle. I enjoy a lot of my paintings, actually. I enjoy all of my paintings. Okay, take care, guys. And maybe I'll see you again. But you can watch this from the beginning. We're not going to delete it. Don't worry.